Hi there. Good morning. I'm Sharon Taylor. I serve as pastor at St. Peter Lutheran Church, and that's located in Fort Myers Beach, Florida. So glad that you're with us today for Blessings on the Beach. Uh, in this aftermath of Hurricane Ian, we've been a little slow to get back to doing our regular routines, but so glad to be back with you and hope that you continue to join me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And our congregation now is being housed temporarily at Peter's Lutheran Church in Fort Myers. And so we're meeting now on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. And we will be live streaming and taping that so that you can join us at any time after Saturday morning for worship as well. So today I'm going to be reading from Joan Chittister, and this is called The Breath of the Soul Reflections on Prayer. And this one's called Authenticity. A quote by C.S. Lewis, the prayer preceding all prayers is, quote, may it be the real I who speaks, may it be the real thou that I speak to, end quote. False gods are very easy to come by in life. They seduce us with power and money and fame. They are the things that I can't give up, the things I can't do without, the things that shout out my identity to the world so that the world can know how important I am. We make gods out of the positions we hold. If people don't know what they are, we make sure to tell them. We make gods out of the social system we have cultivated about who invites us where to do what. We make gods out of the money and the baubles and the trinkets of our lives. We learn even to make gods out of the very religious practices and spiritual disciplines that are meant to lead us beyond ourselves to God. We decide that if we go to church so often, say so many prayers, join so many religious groups, give so much money to the church that we have plumbed the depths of our soul. And in it all, we develop a totally inauthentic self. Not only do others not know who we really are behind all the bling and titles, but we don't know either. Not only have we fooled others about what we really think and who we really are, too often we fool ourselves as well. More than that, too often we stop thinking about anything of real value at all. We stop questioning our own motives. We fail to stretch beyond the comfortable spiritual conversations of another time and age. We stop growing inwardly, satisfied with where we have come, however far from the real content of spiritual life. We play at being spiritual and do not even know we're only playing. Out of that masking of the self comes another kind of confusion. When we are not bringing an honest self to the search for God, we cannot possibly find the real God. We confuse the God of life with the simpler version, the God of the living. We want God to satisfy our present comforts, not as a guide to growth. Prayer that emerges out of attitudes of authenticity and honesty, however, take us beyond all subterfuge all hiding from God, even behind holy things. It requires us to unmask ourselves to, our, to ourselves so that God can come into our lives through the weaknesses because of which we need God most. We must learn to pray out of our weaknesses so that God can become our strength. And her mantra for the day is, Dear God, fill me with yourself so that I might be less full of myself. Dear God, fill me with yourself so that I, I might be less full of myself. And from Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and our strength, who from of old has helped us in our distress. There are, you know, times in life when all of those things that we have used or replaced God with these little gods, little g gods, um, there are times when we don't even realize that we are replacing God with these things of life or these expectations or these false selves that we have. But I was thinking about how just coming out of this tragedy of surviving Hurricane Ian and what that whole process 
does to our sense of self, right? So it unfortunately, involuntarily awakens us and shakes us to our core and has us really have to struggle with where am I putting my trust? In what am I putting my hope? And have I used things and people and even religious practices, as Joan said, have we, I used those to replace God, to replace a relationship with God and replace that going deep in myself and developing a relationship with the true God, the only God that brings abundant life. And so when things are stripped away from us that we have put our trust in, it's those moments that we really have to wrestle with God and wrestle with ourselves to say, what is it that I trust? What is it that's important in life? What is it that makes me real, makes me the person that God created me to be? And are those things dependent on physical possessions or money or fame or any of the other systems that she talked about here? Or do we possess those things inside of us because we are created in God's image? And so I hope that today you are able to think about what you are gra what you are grateful for. For what are you grateful? Um, and what is it in your life right now that connects you to God more authentically and connects you to yourself more authentically? And sometimes it may be what starts out to be the deepest sorrow or suffering that actually is what drives you inward and drives you to Christ and drives you to God and is able to break down and strip away some of those other false gods. So I wish for you today that you will have a blessed day, blessed meaning that you have this sense of God's presence in your life this sense of you are enough and you are beautifully made, created in God's image, and that God is with you through all things. So thanks for joining me today, and I hope that you'll join me back on Thursday. God's peace. Thanks.